let's just go ahead and do number six as sort of a warm up here. And be sure that you start with step two, the test step. This is number six. So this is a sentinel loop. So I want everybody to feel really comfortable when you're given a sentinel loop how to, how to attack that type of problem. Start with step two. Start with step two. So write your step two, okay? Don't panic when you see these. Start your step two. What's the step two for a problem like this? Don't tell me. Write it. Everybody write step two. Everybody can do this. Okay, he said we did it before. Most people seem to have no recollection. Everybody attack this. Do step two. Once you've got step two, good. Once you've got step two, what is step one? So step two is the test step. What's step one? Okay, but what do we call that step? Start step. So yeah, there's where you're going to get the first temperature. So step two is the test. Step one is going to be the start step. So in this case, that would be what? C out, inner temp, C in temp. Get the first temperature, right? You have to know this, people. No miracle is going to occur on the test where all of a sudden you're going to be granted the knowledge. Okay? So here's step two. While temp is not equal to 999. Now, there's no reason why every, anybody in this room can't write that step. Okay? Now, once you've got that step, you say, how do I start this loop? So the start is to get the first temperature. So to get the first, why did I write three? This should be step two. Okay. So the start is just not letting me. What's the start? Okay, so that's your start step. So now the, the action for this loop asks you to do what? Count. So this should be one of those ding ding moments. Where you know how to um, count number above and below freezing. So what do I need in order to do that? I do need an if else. What else do I need? I need how many counters? Two counters. So everybody knows what to do with the counters, right? Set them to zero prior to the loop and increment them based on the condition. So don't be afraid. Do not have fear. If you break this into steps, everybody can do it, okay? So we do need an if else, right? Freezing is what? 32. Okay, so now what if, if it is? 32. Okay, don't just print it. Don't just print it. Why is everybody's default to print? <laughs> we want to count it. Right? It says count the number above or below. It doesn't say anything about printing above or below. Yeah. Not 32. If temp is less, we're going to say 32. Okay, it's a uh, all right, so now I need a counter, so we're going to have a below counter. And what else do we need to do to the count? Declare it, of course, but also set it to zero. And then I'm going to need an above count. Whoops, not here. And then if temp is not less than or equal to 32, I mean, you have to, you have to think here. But if you break it into steps, it should be everybody can do this. Why, why are we having trouble with this? Tell, ask me a question. You don't understand the counter? Okay. So, all right, that's a good question. I like that question. I mean, I can't, an, I can't, I can't answer just puzzled looks. I can answer specific questions. Okay. Okay, everybody, shh. So now remember, with loops, we now have the ability to count things. How many temperatures might be entered in this loop? 
a million or infinite, you know, hundreds of millions, right? And how, what's the, sl sl uh, what's the minimum number of temperatures that can be entered? None. You know, right off the bat, you enter a 999, so no temperatures were entered. So our job is to count every temperature that, and count how many were above and how many were below. Okay? So if I give you a bunch of numbers, and I, s and I say, count how many I give you. And, okay, so everybody ready? So I'm going to say six. I'm going to say three. I'm going to say five, and I'm going to say 100. So what did everybody get for the final count? Four. You got four. So when I gave you the six, what did you put? You, you kind of kept an internal counter. And when I gave you the six, that counter got set to one. When I gave you the whatever the next number was, you incremented that counter. So what I'm essentially doing with the counter is I am taking whatever is in the count, don't let the plus plus confuse you. And I am adding one to it each time. Isn't that what you essentially did as I gave you a new number? You said count is three. When I gave you the next number, didn't you say, let's add one to that count, let's make it four? Okay? So as you get a value with the counter, what you effectively do is take whatever's in the count, add one to it, and put it back into, below, into the count. And that is effectively, whatever makes more sense for you, that is the same thing as saying count plus plus. So don't let that confuse you. C just has that increment aspect. Basically, that means bump by one. Now, because when I declare below count and above count, I can't be sure what's in them. It might be a large number. I need to start with zero. Why do I need to start with zero? Why do, why do I need to initialize counters when I don't need to initialize temp? but I don't know what's in temp either. Adam, can you add to that? Well, what's the first thing I do to temp? I see in it. So do I care what was there? No. What's the first thing I do to below count? Add one. Do I care what was there? You betcha. Right? So if I'm inputting first, I don't need to initialize. It doesn't hurt, but it's not necessary. If, however, the first thing I'm doing to a variable is adding something to it, then I better know what was there to start with. Okay? So counters effectively are used anytime you want to count things. And if you want to count one thing, you need one counter. If you want to count five things, if you want to count vowels, A's, E's, I's, O's, and U's, I think that might be a homework problem, you're going to need five counters. Regardless of how many counters, you always do these two steps to them. You set it to zero prior to the loop to ensure it starts at zero. And when you find the condition, which is typically with an if, you then add one to it. Does that make sense? You sure? Okay. Yep. We can call it whatever you want, but something reasonable would make sense. And then the plus plus is when you find it. Not until you get it, because you don't bump it until you actually had, you could maybe never have an A in the whole list. So you may never, so you only do it in the situation where you've identified that the, the condition has occurred. Um, so that's what a counter is, and so of course these are the same thing. So now, th this is all my action step. Counters are very frequently used, not only for counting, but also for averages, okay? So now what step am I missing from this loop? The restart. So I need to make sure that I ask for another temperature, and I basically put that down here, and that becomes the, um, the finality of my loop, essentially. That's my step four. And then that, this loop will continue to run for a million temperatures, for two temperatures, for no temperatures, and it should work correctly for each of those. And where, where should I print the count? After the loop, typically. After the loop, typically. Okay, so does everybody, anybody have any questions about setting up a sentinel loop? So you, you ha the bottom line is you have to start with that test condition, prime the test condition with the starting, getting the first value, answer whatever the body of the loop is, and there's, there's not that many different things. I'm kind of giving you the, what the different scenarios could be, and then make sure you have your restart step. So if you, if you practice with these, you should be able to tackle any kind of problem that I give you. Okay? Uh-huh. 
so a, a sentinel is a special kind of while. Okay? So what we talk about four different kinds of while loops. A sentinel is one of the kinds of while loops. 